Hey, Valley girls and Valley guys, it's Lisa Quilting in the Valley. We're back for QITV season two. This season, we're gonna start out something a little bit different. So our first two episodes are going to be a sew along for this quilt right here. This time we've partnered with Creative Grids to do the Geese in the Cabin quilt. This quilt, I'm gonna take you through some real basics today. I'm telling you anybody can do this. So if you can cut and piece, you can make this quilt. It is simple, simple. It does not look simple. It looks like a showstopper. And you'll have a wonderful heirloom when you're done. The pattern makes a 72 by 72 square quilt. If you want to adapt that, you can add more fabric, take some away, do whatever you want to do to make the quilt your size. But the one we're working on is going to be a 72 by 72. We're going to be using the Log Cabin Trim Tool Duo ruler. This is a relatively new ruler from Creative Grids, and it allows you to do a number of different things, different sizes of log cabins, and your options for finishing are multiple. You have lots of different designs you can make with the blocks that you make with this. It's going to be a 10 inch square block. Before we get started on this though, I'm going to set these things aside and we're going to talk about the things that make your quilt more professional and easier. This is not just about being more precise. It's about making things easier. If things are easier, they're more fun. We want to have fun. So let's talk about um, what are you going to do first? You're going to cut. When you're cutting, you want to make sure you have the best tools you can get to make it fast and easy. What you don't want to do is get the cheapest thing. You want to get the best value. You don't want to get the most expensive either. Get the best value. Get the thing that's going to provide you the best value for your money. And that, in my estimation, is the Quilter Select straight cut rulers. The Creative Grids rulers are specialty rulers, and you can make all kinds of wonderful things with these, but for straight cutting, you cannot beat a Quilter Select ruler because it won't slip on your fabric. If it doesn't slip on your fabric, that means you don't make miscuts. If you don't make miscuts, that means you don't run out of fabric. You don't have to do it over again, and you don't have to make 50 trips to the store to get more stuff. So, and we'll show you this when we get going into cutting, you'll see how this works. They come in different sizes. This is a six and a half by 24, which is great for doing with the fabric cuts. The second thing we're gonna talk about is making sure you've got a good rotary cutter. Guys, rotary cutting blades need to be replaced. Replace your blades. We're using the Olfa Endurance Blade. This blade lasts about three times as long as a regular rotary cutting blade. And we know this because we use them on our cutting counters here at the shop. They last forever. It won't last if you run over a pin. So if you're cutting and you have like one thread left every so often, then you've got to burn your blade. Replace it. Don't struggle with that. Make it easy. Get a nice clean blade in there so you can make a nice clean cut. Get yourself a decent rotary cutter. Get one that feels good in your hand. This is my personal favorite. It's the ergonomic one from Olfa. It may not be your personal favorite, but it's mine. Feel them, hold them. Get a, get a grip on it so that you know what it'll feel like in your hand and make sure it's comfortable on your wrist, on your arm. And good feature on this one is when you let go of the blade, you're not going to cut yourself because it retracts. So that's what we're doing. We're cutting with a ruler, cutting accurately, and we're cutting cleanly because we've got a good blade in, and we're not stressing out our wrists or our arms because we have the right rotary cutter. Let's talk about piecing. So here's a little tool that we use a lot of the time, and it's called a precision uh, sewing machine seam guides from Precision Piecing. It has quarter inch, three eighths inch, half inch, five eighths inch, and three quarter inch holes in the ruler itself. You put your needle through the hole of the seam allowance you want, lower your foot, and that'll tell you exactly where your quarter inch is, or your three, whatever you're looking for. But quarter inch is what we're gonna be doing. So this will help determine if you need to adjust on your presser foot to find that perfect quarter inch seam. They're like $2.99, not a big deal. Pins. Get yourself good pins. You're gonna pin when you're piecing anything complex, particularly curved piecing. You need good pins for it. These are my personal favorite. These are the extra fine. Uh, they're the magic pins. So they have this kind of rubbery grip at the end. So they're easy to pull in and out of the fabric and they're extra fine. They just glide through the fabric. They leave very small holes. They don't distort the fabric. If you've got those inexpensive pins with the, um, the, the 
yellow plastic heads, they're like trying to drive a nail through fabric. I mean, it really distorts your fabric. Get yourself some decent pins. And then these we're going to use, these are numbered pins. We're going to use these because you're going to cut a lot of different sizes to make this quilt with. And you're going to want to label those as you go. So this has a little number one on it. So I will pin this to the top of that stack of number one pieces so that I know which piece is which piece. And you don't have to get confused or know which one you have to grab next. Let's mark some things. We're going to do half square triangles with our flying geese on here. So that is right in here. You're actually going to put a square there and cut it. So the pattern that we have recommends using a hard tip pen. This is a hard tip pen. It's going to drag your fabric. When you try to write on your fabric, it's going to drag on your fabric. So what we are actually recommending is either get yourself a chaco liner. That's this guy right here. And it just glides. Or my personal favorite for dark fabrics is to get the Bowen Iron Off White Marking Pen. You write with this and you don't see anything. And like 10 seconds later, there's a white line and it irons right off. Great for dark fabrics, which is what we're going to use in this pattern. And then the last thing. So if you've cut right and you've pieced right, you got to press right. So pressing is the key to making a professional looking finished product. It has to be pressed well. Get yourself a decent iron. Our favorite is this one. This is the Panasonic 360. It's curved on both ends. Um, it's got nice weight to it. It gets hot. They last. I've had mine for six years. I use Best Press. I don't use the steam. I use the Best Press. I don't use vodka. Vodka is made with starch. Starch attracts bugs like silverfish, which is gross. I don't want nasty, slimy silverfish stuff in my quilts. So I use Best Press, which is a starch alternative, and it doesn't have anything that bugs eat in it. Um, and because I'm crazy, I like the peach scent. And it lasts, and you take it out of the, and it smells like peaches, and it's, ugh. Many scents in Best Press, but peach is my favorite. But we use the mister to get better use out of this. So you, you get a spray head with Best Press, but it's kind of a coarse spray. So it goes out a little bit globby. When you use the mister, which I just filled, you see the real fine mist? This was actually made for the hairdressing industry. You won't get spots or globs on your fabric, but you will get a nice coating of the Best Press starch alternative, which will allow you to get your seams pressed really flat. Additionally, you're going to make sure when you're pressing your seams that you're just nudging them open, as open as they can be before you press so that you're not pressing folds into your seams. The last thing I want to tell you about that you're probably going to want to invest in if you don't already have one for this quilt in particular, because we're going to make 36 of these blocks. And each of these blocks has eight rounds, and you're going to trim every eight round times 36 blocks. So you're going to have a lot of trimming to do. This is a rotating cutting mat. So when I put my block on here, this is a 14 inch, by the way. When I put my block on here to trim, I can go trim, trim. And then I go like this, trim, trim. So I don't have to pick up my block and move it in order to trim all four sides with this mat. There's a smaller one, there's an eight inch one uh, that will not be sufficient for the blocks that we're doing here. So you need the bigger one, which is the 14 inch. And I have both sizes, I use them all the time. Okay, we are gonna get started talking about cutting. We're gonna get started with our fabric selections. I'll show you how to determine which fabric goes with which piece, and then we're gonna start cutting. Be right back. Here's our Geese in the Cabin kit. For those of you who have not yet jumped in and taken the plunge, we do have many kits available with all the fabrics that you need to make this Geese in the Cabin kit. We just had some questions from the film crew. They were like, where are the geese? Just in case you didn't know where the geese or where the cabin is, I'm going to show you. So these right here, these little half square triangles that are flying out here are your geese. Those are the geese. And then this right here, so you see your center square, and then you see the logs going around it. 
that's your cabin. That's a log cabin block. So for those of you who didn't know that, and shame on me, I didn't realize some people might not know that, flying geese inserted into a log cabin block is what we're gonna make. And this is our kit, which we have in many different colorways. So uh, we have colors that aren't even up here. So we have many different colorways. I think we have 14, maybe 15 different colorways. They're $129.99 for the kit. That doesn't include the ruler. The ruler is available separately. Again, it is the Log Cabin Trim Tool Duo, 10 inch Log Cabin Trim Tool Duo by Creative Grids. And if you purchase the ruler from us, we will give you the pattern for free. That comes with the ruler. So it's two separate things. You get one the kit if you want one and one the ruler with the free pattern or you can just get the ruler with the free pattern and do your own fabric. But my goodness, we've cut so many kits in so many pretty colorways. Why wouldn't you wanna do that? Here's how you determine in your kit what goes where. Your biggest piece of fabric is your background. Your background is gonna be the light stuff in here. Your second biggest piece of fabric, in this case, this one, is gonna be your border and binding. So that's this, and your binding. Your third biggest piece of fabric is this one right here. We've used for this particular kit a lighter fabric for the geese instead of a darker fabric. Most of the kits have a dark fabric for the, the geese. We're gonna use a light one because we've got dark fabrics here. So that would be these guys. Then your next biggest piece of fabric right here is gonna be the dark part of your log cabin, then the medium dark, then the medium light, and then the light in your log cabin, and that is this part right here. Your dark, your medium dark, your medium light, and your light, and that's what gives you this neat gradated effect in the blocks, it gives you some movement to the blocks. So that is our fabric, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get set up to cut. I will tell you that this cutting station is not set to my ideal height. I'm tall. You wanna have a cutting station where when you stand in front of it, you can rest your hands with your elbows at a 90 degree angle. That's the optimal height for you to be cutting at so that you don't have back problems. If you can do that, get yourself set up like that. It'll save you a lot of back aches. Okay, we're gonna set up to cut and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And I promised you I would show you the Quilter Select ruler and why um, it's a good ruler for stuff like this. So I can put this ruler down and look at there. It's not gonna slip on my fabric. So this is an excellent ruler to use for cutting with the fabric strips. Um, you're just not gonna waste as much fabric as you would. So we are following our directions. We're gonna start with the very first piece that's listed, which is fabric number one. Fabric number one is the lightest of your log cabin logs. That's this one in this particular kit. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check that your, well, the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna press your fabric, make sure you press your fabric. And then you're gonna check that your cutting side, the side you're cutting from, if you're right-handed, it's gonna be this side, if you're left-handed, it'll be over here. Um, make sure that you're nice and straight, which mine happens to be, so I'm not gonna cut anything off of it. I am gonna cut eight one and three quarter inch strips off of this piece of fabric. I have my handle on my quilter select ruler because it won't slip on the fabric. So once I make this cut and I wanna slide it to do the next cut, it's not gonna slide. So my handle is to make it easy to pull the, the ruler up and move it. I have my rotary cutter. I'm all lined up on my cutting mat. I'm gonna start before the fabric I'm gonna nudge the blade up against the ruler and make sure I'm at as close to a 90 degree angle as I can be. And then I'm just gonna, like that, straight forward. That's all you're gonna do. So we're gonna cut a bunch of those strips and I'm gonna cut two right now so that I can show you what we're gonna do with the next cuts. I'll just set this to the side. And the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to subcut these strips into the pieces marked on your pattern. And just to be clear so that we don't violate any copyright stuff, I'm not gonna tell you what you're gonna cut those into. You're gonna to need to refer to your pattern 
but you are going to subcut these into two different shapes as your pattern calls for. And you're going to get a whole bunch of these. So this is one size. And then I'm going to do my second size. So I'm going to cut the number that this calls for on here. And these are pieces one and two. So I am going to go ahead and mark those so that I know where they're going. There's my one, and there's my two. And that, you guys, will just help tremendously when we get into piecing, because you won't have to guess which piece goes next. So we're going to finish cutting all of this. You don't have to cut your border fabric or your binding fabric um, yet, uh, but you do want to follow your uh, cutting directions as outlined on your pattern and subcut all of your log pieces and your geese pieces. We can do the borders and the binding when we get to the end and that way you can measure a little more accurately. Um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and get all of this cutting done. When we come back for episode two, we're gonna start piecing it, but you wanna get all your cutting done because you do need one of each color fabric to make one block. So you do need to have your cutting done up front in order to do this. Okay. I think we have enough time, if I'm not mistaken, that I can show you the really cool thing that we got. A lot of people wanted to see this working. So we can go in to our back uh, kind of warehouse area and show you how our fabric cutting machine works and how we cut kits for fabric. Okay, so here we are. We're back in the warehouse area, so it ain't pretty, but hey, this is where we do a lot of those kit cuttings. So all those kits that I just showed you, uh, we're working on cutting those back in here in our fabric cutting kiosk. So I will show you how that works. The first thing you're gonna do is load your fabric and cut an inch off of it, and that gets you a nice even cut. That's why when I cut my piece of fabric, it was very even, I didn't have to straighten it. Um, doesn't always happen, but for the most part, you can see how it's smaller on one side than it was on the other. And now I'm going to do four half yard cuts and off it goes. It is now cutting our fabric for, this is going to be the light for a new kit. This will be the, um, the lightest of the log cabin logs for a new kit we just started cutting. So, Here's a piece, there's a piece, there's a piece. We'll have another one and uh, then we'll start putting more kits together. That's how easy that is. And that's how we're making all these kits that we're cutting so that you guys can sew along with us. Episode two, we're gonna start stitching the actual geese in the cabin block and I'll show you how to use the ruler. That's next time. For this time, we're gonna sign out, we're done for today.